come again. Thank you for joining us today for uh, this diversified webinar that's hosted by Sony. We're happy to have this partner with us today, and I'll be turning over those reins here very shortly. But for right now, I just wanted to uh, thank you for joining us. This is the second in a two-part webinar series that we have done with Sony. Uh, today, we'll be covering the inner workings of live production and control automation. And uh, as this webinar will be recorded, just as our previous webinar will, and will be available for you to view later. So we'll be sending out a link to that. And I'll also be posting the link to our previous webinar, which was new technology for the live production IP landscape, in case you didn't have a chance to join us for that webinar. Uh, before I move on to, um, uh, to, uh, to turning this over to Sony, I do want to take just a moment to talk about uh, some of the basics in the webinar today. Um, the chat window is a place where I will be posting some information here and there, resources that you might be interested in, including those links. As well, please feel free to use that chat to reach out to me directly. I'm proud to, to be your host and moderator, and, and we will be answering um, any questions or needs you might have there. But for Q&A, I would ask you to use your Q&A window and open that up, and please submit your questions at any time. We will reserve the last 10 to 15 minutes at the end of the webinar today to answer those questions and, um, and use that as a resource. Source. So at this time, I would like to um, turn it over to our partner Sony and to Jason Weintraub, who will be uh, pre presenting him uh, today and introducing himself. And thank you again for joining us. Jason, on to you. Thank you so much. Um, appreciate it. Hopefully you can hear me if uh, my headset is going to work for me today, Lisa. So give me the, I'll uh, assume everything's okay unless I, there you are. It works. Perfect. Excellent. Yep. Excellent. Always have to check before any presentation. Um, don't want to uh, be silent for too long. So uh, thank you everyone for joining. My name is Jason Weintraub and I am going to turn off my video because my screen off to my side here is where I'll be doing my presentation and I don't want to be looking off to the side and uh, appear to be rude. So I will be turning off my video. Um, as Lisa mentioned, if you have any questions, feel free to put them into the Q&A window um, and we will address all of the questions um, and also um, thoughts that you might have about uh, our product offering as well as uh, that we're going to be speaking of today as, as well as we're you know, get some interest in where you think that, um, you know, your input uh, might further develop the uh, workflow and efficiency that we're going to speak of today. The specific topic for today is the inner workings of live production control automation system. Sony's um, system, uh, is, which is, of course, called uh, uh, our control and automation system, which is called ELC. Again, as Lisa mentioned, my name is Jason Weintraub. I'm the product manager for ELC. I'm also a senior manager at Sony, um, specifically with our national accounts group. Um, and uh, uh, my team is essentially responsible for the broadcast media. So the people I work with um, and have a pleasure to work with are the people who are reaching out to all of our, our, our large accounts and implementing not just individual products, uh, you know, such as a switcher, a camera, an automation solution, but more of a workflow and efficiency of how do we create a partnership that does everything that you need to get out of the systems because in the last 12 months specifically the last eight but in the last 12 months so much has changed um, that I, I would likely think that this is probably the fastest change of what we've had both in society as well as in technology um, in fact i am as you saw from the camera i am doing this from my home office in my basement which is obviously something new that uh, you know was not like this a year ago um, and just to remind everybody how much has changed in the last uh, a couple of years, I was reminded uh, a bit ago about that interview that everybody saw on BBC where a gentleman was on, on uh, at home doing um, an interview and they were speaking. He was speaking with a moderator and his kids kind of came in the room. And if you remember, the wife ran into the room, tried to get underneath the camera and pull the kids out. That's now what I call Tuesday. My kids constantly come in during all webinars, during all times and ask me questions whether or not dad's working or whether or not mom's working. Um, we're just, it's all fair game. So a lot has changed, obviously, for everybody in the last year across the world. And Sony is adapting to see what we can do to help our, our partners. Um, so to begin, ELC is, of course, our control room automation application. And it does allow for complete control of a broadcast facility. Um, automation is not anything new. Um, Sony has been doing automation for many, many years. Um, and then, of course, we brought it to the Americas, as we called it, ELC, um, back in 2007. Um, and what we have is essentially full control room operation with as few as one operator. I'd say about 49% of our installations have one operator that runs the entire control room. And when I speak of that, I'm not talking of the content or the newsroom uh, producer or the sports producer, but specifically the person operating the control room equipment. 
Another 49% are operating with two people, uh, two operators, a pilot and a co-pilot, or a director and a TD, and they share the responsibilities. And we also have just a couple percent of our installation base that is, uh, you know, more than that, three. So there are uh, some sports facilities that are using us, and graphics are so key that they want to have a graphic assist or a, a font um, operator that works um, for some of the shows. So as an example, some of our facilities that are using in a sports market may have a Chiron operator for a post game show uh, for the for you know after the game, but they may use automation to control their Chiron, VizRT, Expression, Vertigo, whatever the product offering is for the pregame show that's more formatted. So we've really kind of designed the system to be able to handle any style of variety of show that is appropriate. Of course, the control room system operates our Sony switchers, any audio console, camera robotics company, graphics system, playout device. We also uh, do lighting controls. So based on the story that you're on, we can turn on and off lights um, in different parts of the studio. We can set them to different levels based on the complexion of the talent. Um, we also can change the entire look of the studio with LED colored lighting based on the story. So if you have breaking news or breaking sports update that you wanna do, or if it's an entertainment style show, we can focus all the lighting that's appropriate to the specific story you're on. Um, and we also have the ability to call up those light scenes, even on the fly, even if you didn't specifically put it in your rundown, um, it's all uh, capable. We also do teleprompter control. So we can load the teleprompter and make sure that it's in the correct rundown that you're going to be broadcasting in. And then we have added router control to our system as well. Where are we? Um, pretty much all over the country. If you look at the CLC is the system that is used, um, you know, by far in the, in large market areas and also into small, if you look, you know, um, into very small cities. And then of course, up in New York, um, LA, Chicago, uh, San Francisco, um, every station in Detroit is using ELC for every news broadcast, um, CNN, NBC, um, uh, the Fox O and O group, the CBS O and O group. Um, so really, you know, Technoscripts, Nextstar, all of the large groups are really going towards ELC, which is great because um, we feel that we're giving them options of being able to have a strong newscast that is efficient and provides good workflow for them, but also um, provides a high production level quality show. It allows, we've broken down the barriers of what the old fashioned automation stigma was, that it was very um, you know, inflexible. That's not true with ELC, that you had to be coded and know what you're gonna do an hour before the show. That's not true with ELC. You can literally point at any monitor and say, I wanna take that source. And with audio, video, a white mix, minus studio monitor, anything that you want can be down to a single button press um, and ready to go. So you have a lot of flexibility with how we operate. So just one step back, news production. What is news production? Well, of course, conventional news production was in a broadcast station, consisted of perhaps a lot of different newscast directors and then conventional Sony products that, you know, at that point we had our Sony XVS switchers, we have cameras, we have studio monitors, servers and things. And we also provide um, for the capability of XC Camp Air, which can bring in external sources um, using 4G Wi-Fi technology. And we also have microwave and satellite feeds. All those things would come to a conventional broadcast station. And that's, of course, if you're a non-automated manual facility or before automation came over. Once we added automation, what we added was the ability for ELC to control everything in the facility. And we did do it with less newscast directors that were required per show. But that didn't necessarily mean that we were reducing the number of people that were in the building. Perhaps we just added more programming without adding people, or we you know, found other ways to utilize those people. So many of our customers had directors that would become assistants and then do different shows on the side. Um, so it did allow us to increase the operational operational efficiency for however it was appropriate for that individual customer. And we increased the production capabilities because now, and um, if, if you were someone who had to call a show as a director, there were still a couple of people that were listening to your words, had to interpret your commands and then do it at the moment you said. ELC automatically takes care of all of those things. So if the director has a decision on what they wanna do, they press the button and all of the equipment follows suit and, um, and we've reduced significant number of on your mistakes by allowing computers to uh, automate the processes that uh, that we've done. Um, we've also, you know, have reduced OPEX costs by being able to control, you know, many different variations and versions of different types of hardware. Um, you know, everything that's, that we've had since the beginning of MVS 8000A switchers up to our current um, flagship, which is the XVS 8 and 9000 switchers can be controlled by ELC and, and we've never left any switcher behind. So when we build these things out, 
we're doing it with the idea of not only increasing the capability of the station, but not increasing the, you know, the capex and not increasing the opex to do the show that you want to do. And that's where, um, where Sony's partnership is really focused. If we look at now where we are in now in 2020, um, and, and we can even step one step back into 2019, when we started in 2019, looking at what did we think was going to be the next thing, what we did is we talked to all of our um, groups, all of our um, broadcast groups, and we kind of started to listen to where they felt the next efficiency needed to be. And what we developed was something called ELC remote. ELC remote is what brought us the capability of having two particular television stations, both that would have their own um, operational you know, um, concepts. So station one might be in New York, station two might be in LA. Both have their own individual newscast broadcast, uh, newscast directors, broadcast times, as well as all of the equipment in, in any given facility. What we designed in early 2019 was the ability to be able to say, if for some reason station one had to leave the building, be it for an equipment failure, if there was any reason that the operators could not stay within the building, we wanted to give any of the stations the ability to completely control a, another station from anywhere in the world from a different TV station. So we've added that in and we've had that um, you know, going. And what that allowed is for any station to have the operational efficiency to be able to control any other for both a backup scenario or maybe even a daily routine. So what that allowed us to do is have things like ELC remote. And ELC remote is like you see here, many of our broadcast partners have been using ELC remote to be able to use ELC at home. Now, when, of course, the pandemic came in, we never intended, of course, to be able to operate directly from our house, but that is what ended up occurring because we created the ability to be able to completely remotely control a broadcast facility. These are just two of the pictures that you see um, in these two, and this is just two of the stations that have actually started to be um, to be using ELC remote um, so that they can completely control the control room. So what you're seeing here is people, directors who are working from home, we have in one case in the upper left hand corner, we have iNews. On the right hand side, we have ELC and um, Chiron for their graphics. And in the center, they have a multi viewer. This in the middle here um, is the uh, right below this uh, middle Dell laptop is a tablet. And that tablet is actually running our software services as opposed to the hardware services that we have in a normal installation and a typical install. And that's a touch screen. So the operator is sitting back there and pushing on a touch screen that is operating remote software or software that is installed at the television facility. We'll talk about more than that in just one second. And it appears that just for good measure, he's also charging his phone at the same time. Um, and in the bottom picture, we have another situation where you've got somebody who's working from home. They've got, they're using EMPS and Chiron. They've got our on-air playlist and the work services in the bottom as well. And um, they're also do, um, doing daily newscasts now directly from home. So what we've learned from this is that the way that we've um, you know, implemented this, that for the pandemic, we can allow for social distancing. We can allow for back-to-back -back rundowns. We also have allowed for the ability to do breaking news when someone is not necessarily at that station, which goes into our next model for what we consider a centralized potential for master control. So what we can do now is using the same tools that we've just shown you on the last two slides of being able to have one station operate any station within a company or being able to operate from home, we recognize that there is the potential for control, centralized control of any station within a group. What that means is that I could potentially, as a station group, have a, a focus of operators that may be doing different broadcasts and different television stations throughout their broadcast day. So I may actually operate a five o'clock newscast in New York, and then an hour later, I might do a five o'clock newscast in Chicago, and then do a five o'clock newscast in Denver, followed by a five o'clock newscast in California. What that's done is it's allowed a, a remote capability. Now that we have these capabilities, remote intercom, remote um, multi viewers, we've given the capability for station groups to decide what best works for my workflow. And it may just be in large markets. It may be to say in Houston, I would like for somebody to be operate a station that I have in a very small market when I'm not doing news in Houston. The end goal for that station group is that they have more shows being done by the same number of people. So they're getting better use source, uh, uh, resource utilization out of those people, but they're also getting a very high level caliper director in a large market who may be doing newscasts in many markets throughout the country, bringing that high level of capability that they have and the high level of expertise and using it for other stations. So what we believe is that we can actually bring up the quality 
of all of the broadcasts that with uh, that occur within that station group, and also give them the ability to have more shows that each director is doing within their broadcast day, um, which gives them, of course, better operational efficiencies. There's one more example that I just wanted to mention, and that is um, last year we took upon in 2019 the ability to add a television station without adding any infrastructure. So what we did is we went to a, a, a group, Draper Media, that has a television station, WBOC. Draper contacted us and mentioned that they would like to open another station about 50 miles away. The only thing that was actually placed at the remote facility 50 miles away in, a, in what literally is a conference room style studio are lights, cameras, the monitors, and, and the anchors that are sitting in the studio. All processing gear goes back and forth through IP technology back to where the existing television station was in the first market. And then all of the operations, the ELC, the teleprompter, the audio back and forth, the, the pre-feed for the weather operator so that he can see what he's going to look like in front of the weather uh, chroma key. All of that is occurring within the primary television station where, the, where all the terminal gear is. So in this particular opportunity, it has given them a significant capability of having flexible breaking news coverage, because again, I can operate breaking news in any station within my group without having to have somebody on site waiting around. It has given them significantly increased operational efficiency because without adding any um, personnel, they're now doing news broadcasts in two different markets. As I mentioned, it, it does continue to allow that higher level of production quality in all of the markets that they're operating, because you know, normally it would be it may be a challenge in small in some markets or in small markets to start a new station where you have to then train everybody and get them going and figure out how to uh, create a brand new newscast. But it's also created less on-prem hardware. Less on-prem hardware means, of course, that there's less maintenance and less cost to a television station to be able to make this happen. Um, and there's less maintenance staff that has to be on site at that remote facility. By having all of their equipment in a central core at the at the primary television studio, that the maintenance people that are already there are able to maintain the equipment for multiple stations because there is not the outreach of equipment that is located in remote facilities. So this is something that we have found that um, that has it worked as a model, and primarily what you're seeing in all of our um, scenarios here is that we're expanding the capability from what automation at a television station primarily did, which was give somebody the ability to come into a facility and then sit down and operate, you know, eight, one or two or three newscasts within their broadcast day. And now we've expanded the capability to be able to do completely remote facilities, to be able to share and do different newscasts throughout my broadcast day, it really doesn't matter where I am, or it might just be to be able to do an ad relief. So as an example, if I work in, in Los Angeles, and New York has a part of their broadcast day where they may not necessarily have staff on site. Um, as an example, when I, I worked in television news for 20 years, and primarily what they would do is they would staff people from 4 a.m. until noon or 1230, and then again from 3 until midnight again. Well, that noon to you know, 1230 until 3 time frame, there isn't necessarily somebody on site. Well, breaking news isn't waiting for staff to come in, of course. So now what we have the ability to do is be able to remotely start a newscast or a broadcast from any facility within that company's network. And that's with a trust relationship to verify we have um, username, password, and authentication to make sure that you know we've got that control. But it allows that any station to go on the air within that group. And then when that group gets their staff in, whether or not they call them in or just wait during the normally scheduled time, then they can come in and seamlessly resume local programming and allow that remote resource to go and focus on their processing. So, as I mentioned, what really our focus has been since the beginning of 2019 has been to how do we find ways to take PLC, which is already you know, extremely popular with our large broadcast groups um, and small broadcast groups across all the markets in the country that we're in, and, and find the next version of an operational efficiency. So, where do we push to make sure that we're moving forward with the next, what we can offer next to our customers? Um, just to give you an idea very quickly, I've, I've got um, just a couple more pictures also, and then I was going to show you very quickly, as I, think, um, as I mentioned, this is um, actually one station that, we, um, that we've shown. This is another view of another director at that same television station that's operating remote completely um, from their home. They're doing their new newscast every day completely from home. And then um, we have another station that is also, again, operating completely from home, and they actually have directors um, who will code the show. Um, and then completely broadcast from their home and not even show up in the uh, control room. The way that we've done that 
to make that um, work for them is we have our application called on air playlist. And if I were to start my on air playlist, uh, you would see that as for all the stories that are here and ready to go, um, whereas we used to have hardware surfaces for, a tr for trimming the audio levels and for advancing our rundown, Sony has created the ability to have software surfaces. So in this case, I have two of my shot boxes. So I have these boxes down here that each different um, uh, module has 10 different banks of buttons of what I would like them to do. And I have two of them. And then on the top half, I have some audio adjusting uh, faders. So if I were to, um, if I wanted to go on, all I have to do is select, you know, um, to hit my take button. And now I've started my rundown. I'm gonna go back and forth briefly just between my ELC playlist, which is the uh, list or the playlist of what will happen while, while I'm on air. And then back here, you see the software, which is which is following along. So as I hit the take button, as I hit the take button, you'll see that it's gonna automatically step through my rundown. And I can I'll come over here. And again, if this were a touch screen, I can operate this with my fingertip. And I can also, you know, um, you know scroll with a scroll wheel. Okay. And then I can do anything I want with regards to the Chiron. I can change my lighting. I can call up clip players, control my teleprompter. Um, whatever it is that's appropriate for the individual show that I'm working on, I can, I can do that completely remotely. Now, the, the key of the way that we've installed this software is that this software is all installed at the television facility. So there, so I don't have to go to individual operators at their home computers or at their laptops and start installing software. What they would do is they log in through their um, established VPN network, and then they can um, you know, essentially control via TeamViewer or SplashView or whatever the you know remote facility they like. They can operate the entire station. And what's also nice about this is potentially I could have multiple directors logged in at the same time. And you could have one director who's going to sit and adjust audio level, and I could have another director who's going to use a touchscreen to control the switcher or the, um, the ELC control panel. So all of the capability is available to be able to handle remote. Another thing that we've added is the ability to have virtual shop box for our switchers. So on our switcher directly, I can change things just specific to the switcher through an HTML5 interface. I also have something called virtual menu where I can actually operate my entire um, menu menu panel system completely remotely. And we've also created something called virtual control panel where in virtual control panel, I can um, literally come over and, and immediately take control of my switcher as well. Again, HTML5 and web-based means that I'm, I'm, I, I can, you know, do, I can have complete control of the switcher operations and even do things like, you know, fades and, and dissolves, adjust keys, any of the things that I would likely normally do in front of a normal control panel, I can also now do right in front of the switcher. And of course I can zoom this in if I'd like to. And if this were on a tablet, of course I can pinch and zoom just like a phone and I can move around and see all the sources that I've got. Um, I can also do a shortcut to go specifically right to a module if I'd like to, so I can jump right to it. Okay. And I can have all of the adjustments that I would have in a normal front end switcher, but remote. So again, Primarily what we worked on here is the ability to provide an at-home experience, whether it be for a pandemic, whether it be for emergency needing to leave the building, whether it's um, resource sharing, if it's breaking news coverage, if it's centralized operations. Our focus was how do we find the next version of how to be the most efficient system for our customers to be able to um, do what they do best, which is be able to broadcast an, an, a high quality newscast or high quality sportscast or entertainment style show, we, we do them all. Um, and what is the best way that we can make it for them to be more efficient and move forward into what will be the next trend? As it turns out, the planning that we were doing to be able to operate the remote capability fit really nicely into the situation that we all found ourselves in in 2020. Um, but again, you know, we're happy to provide that capability. So with that, if we want to, we can take a break and we can ask some questions or we can, or is there anything specific, Lisa, that uh, any questions that have come in at this point that we want to kind of go over that we've talked about the remote and I guess some feedback from those who have joined in. Yeah, thank you for um, for pausing for a moment. Um, we did have a question that came in uh, through the chat. If any groups have started using the ELC remote for actual on air shows. Yeah, absolutely. So we have um, actually quite a few groups right now that are using this for daily newscasts. Um, you know, the technical group, the CBS stations group, and everybody else has, has, has on directly to us at this point. And they are using actually remote newscasts for multiple newscasts a day um, now. And they are um, seamlessly going back and forth in morning newscasts. And, and as we talk about the morning newscasts specifically, and as I mentioned, ELC is in use right now for sports 
um, regional sports networks for news, entertainment, style shows. We're doing a lot of them. But news is the one thing that we found that really was helpful with regards to how they're doing that because of social distancing measures, because it's not uncommon that we see newscasts will go, news stations will go on the air from 4.30 in the morning until 9, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning straight for, you know, five, six, seven and a half hours of continual coverage. With social distancing, that's a challenge for anybody because what they have is the ability, they, they need to be able to get up and have one person leave and come back. And there is no time to you know, clean off the work surfaces or do any of that. So what we've done is been able to provide either multiple control room points so that you could have two, two or more rooms within a specific TV studio that you know, can control simultaneously for ELC, or everybody just works from home. And what they've done is, as I mentioned, people just work from home and then they just log in when it's their time and they you know, start pushing the buttons and the next person logs off. So um, we, we definitely have had, um, a lot of success with people actually directing from home. Excellent, perfect. Um, and it looks like um, we've got an, another question here about the feedback on creativity and workflow using ELC during the pandemic. You know, kind of bringing it to the current uh, temperature. Yeah, that, that's another um, good point, and something that I think that I, I'll be honest, I was surprised that the way that the the um, the way that the, the creativity is has really kind of been from everybody's kind of kind of stepping up in the um, in the field now and saying, okay, how do we do what we need to do? Because everybody was kind of taken back on, you know, what we have to be the person to provide the information to people at home, and we can't take a step back. So what we found is that the creativity did not suffer at all, and that's after talking to almost every customer that's using daily types of things. So what they've done is they've gone to more. Um, Zooms so that, um, you know, we've got some customers that have said that they literally set up a Zoom session on a laptop with a producer and they will sit next to each other on a Zoom and, uh, for the entire day. Um, and they have producers that are working from home and they have directors and technical people who are working from home. So they all log on to the intercom to be able to talk to people. Um, of course, intercoms have the capability of being all software based from home now as well. Um, and they sit right next to their producer and um, and you know they they and, and many have said to me they turn on and off their camera throughout the day as they get up and go grab a cup of coffee, but they um, but the creativity has not suffered. And what they've said is that with the, with the ability that the directors are talking to each other, they've actually done some of the opposite. And that some of the directors who previously would do like for an example the 5 a.m. newscast, that director might also do the 6 a.m. or the 7 a.m. Now what they're finding is that directors who work at night will kind of log in in the morning and do some extra things just to kind of make the show or they'll give the morning person a break because, you know, they're at home and they don't mind stepping in and helping out. So what we've seen is instead of a, um, a, a you know, change of, you know, hey, let's just get on the air and make sh clean shows. We're actually seeing and hearing from our customers that it's allowed them to do more, um, you know, more types of coverage. And we found that many of our customers are now doing additional programming because of this. So what they're doing is they're doing web shows. Uh, or um, you know chats with um, you know uh, uh, their medical experts that work in the in the local area that are specifically going to other types of OTA platforms that the stations are using to be able to say hey you know I'm I'm going to increase my amount of programming and I don't have to bring anybody else into the building which is something that again I don't think any of us you know two to three years ago would have ever thought would have been possible but as it is right now what we're seeing is that we are seeing more programming without the addition of people. Which has been, um, you know, really, um, you know, within our industry, uh, a, a ple very pleasant surprise. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's 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 a constant fluid situ situation to to reevaluate where you're at and how things work, and it and it expands us. So so thanks for touching on that. Um, we don't have other questions at the moment, so I can let you get back to your presentation. We can address those more towards the end or as they come in. Okay. Um, with that being said, the other you know, um, the other thing I just wanted to mention specifically is that some things that we've added to ELC specifically again for the remote capability is the ability to change things on the fly. So Sony does do something we call bidirectional MOS support, and in bidirectional MOS support, what that means is the old way that of doing things, whereas we would have to go into iNews or EMPS and we would operate a plugin. If I wanted to change this queue as an example, what um, the old way of doing this many, many years ago was is that I would have to go into the into the rundown. I would open up a queue, of course, and I would have to make the modification and save that rundown. What we've done is we've revolutionized the way that we can do this so that we can just right mouse click on a story and change it right even if it's in preset. So instead of going to camera one while it's in preset, I can say, you know what, I want to go to camera two and it'll update right inside preset. And not only does it update my playlist, but it actually updates the iNews or EMPS MOS item as well. 
the benefit to that being, again, as we think about how can we increase the workflow and efficiencies for the news and the content, what that does is not only does it update it from my script, but it actually updates the item inside of iNews or EMPS. So that as a producer takes the story and maybe brings it to their rundown, because we know that frequently, you know, content will be copied between rundowns because they may play a story more than once. The story has been corrected and stays on the air and is fixed all the way through the system. So we're not just changing it for what's happening on the switcher at this moment. We're changing it back from the original story so that it follows through all the way. Then we heard from our customers and they said, hey, we just would really like the ability to be able to change some things right on the fly without even having to open a plugin. And we, so we said, okay, we can do that. So what we've done is we've made it so that if we want to change a microphone, I can just hover over a microphone, right mouse click and change it on the fly to any other microphone. We've also added um, error capabilities so that if a, if a station does something that might be, cause an error, they'll get a caution message like you see in the bottom left there with that error message. And if I hover over it, it'll tell me that on page 16, they, um, they had coded for a file on our dad audio playback, which is a music player, of course, music server, and that clip is not on the dad right now. So that's something that they're gonna wanna pay attention to so that they can fix that. These error messages that you see, by the way, these caution messages you see on page 16, those are actually reported back to the newscast producers while they're prepping the show, hours before the newscast. So hours before ELC is allowing operators to understand that the choices they're making to build the newscast as it looks may result in something that they don't like to see on air. It may result in a camera zoom that you know that may look weird. It may result in an audio file that's not quite the, that isn't on the system, so they won't hear that music clip. Um, so we so the other thing that we noted is that we can't let the newscast automation out there because that person is now the last line of defense or the last person before the, something goes to the transmitter. We need to make, give that person as much warning as possible more information is always better so that's why we have these caution messages that let the operator know that the, that the item they've, they've done is not is not necessarily there so if i were to go to page 16 and i want to fix that audio clip and by the way i can hover over that clip and it will tell me the name of the clip as well as the duration of that clip that's also something we've recently added and if i were to edit that clip and let's say instead of that audio clip let's try Oh, I don't know. Let's try this music clip, uh, clip here. It'll update the clip, and also want, if that clip is there, you see that the error message goes away. Now, in this case, I have a different error message from a different one. This is my next thing. It looks like the dad just somebody coded some music on here that wasn't necessarily there. Again, so you know you can edit this on the fly. Now, this in this case was a Digicart item, so in this case, I'll go back to a different audio player called a different clip. The system's going to reach out to that audio player and see if it's there, and if it is, then the error message is going away. So I can step through and find all of my errors way before I ever leave the control room. We also have a special code here called MS or manual switching. Manual switching is a type of code that we create that allows for hot switching if you want a switcher. And um, that's been a real favorite uh, feature that we've heard from customers back from eight, nine, 10 years ago that we added. In this particular code, I'm gonna do an interview. As you see, I've got a weather system that's gonna play, um, play some um, clips. But after I do that, I want to go to an interview style show. So I'm going to play that clip. And now I have an interview with cam with cameras. Question is, if I'm coming out to an interview, I would have to do the safe thing if I don't know who's going to be talking, which is I might have to take to a three shot because I may have three talent out there and I don't know who specifically is going to be um, you know, speaking when I come out of my video. So what we've done is we've made a queue that allows you to have multiple different sources and I can write mouse click and say, you know what, I want to come out to the weather person. Or maybe I want to come out to REM3, or I'm going to come out directly back to my camera short, so I can immediately, you know, uh, you know, make that change on the fly without having to. Open it. So again, it's that flexibility of being able to say, even though I'm in an automated show, I want to be able to change things on the fly and make it feel like a high quality manual show. In addition to right mouse clicking though, we've also said, you know, some people don't like to grab the mouse during a broadcast. So we'll give them the ability to be able to do it while it's on air. And you see that I can change on my shop box when I'm gonna come out to on my shop box. And of course, there's a physical version of the shop box as well. This is just the software version since we're all, you know. And not only can I change when I'm coming out to preset, but I can also, when I hit the take button and make that line go green, green and Sony means that it's on the air, yellow is what's queued. When I put that line on the air, now I can actually take different sources and I can actually cut on Miami. So what I'm doing is, a, is an interview style show without having to prep ahead of, hey, I know that I'm gonna go from my um, three shot to my REM two to weather one, no, no need to worry about that. I can just cut an interview in any style I want. 
So that's something that we I mean, that we have manual called manual switching. Another feature, um, you know, that you can see. And again, just real quick on our GUI, what we'd like to show is just the way that it operates. Um, you'll you'll note that it's the top. It is top to bottom very similar to iNews and EMPS. So it's very uh, comfortable for people who are operating. Now this is our my iNews system, but you see that I have a page number and I have a slug. Okay, what the directors are used to using. And inside of EM, um, my um, ELC rundown, I also have the page number. And I have the slug. Below that, I have the I have what will happen when this goes on air. So starting from left to right, I have the transition style of how I'm going to get to, to that queue, the video source that I'm going to have on air. If I have any audio, I have eight channels here that dynamically change to whatever the director has coded. So for my next line, I'm going to go to camera number two under the camera column here it shows me that that camera is in manual mode so i'm not going to drive the camera in this particular shot i just want to take the camera the camera is going to be pointing at my two talent plus my what my sports person on the right that's what this icon of course is showing and when i go, um, come over and i hit my take button it will take it on the fly okay um, also in ELC, we have the ability to be able to change that transition on the fly. So even though right now, as an example, I'm supposed to do a cut to server B, I, at any point I can say, you know what, let's do a, a dissolve of 30 frames and hit take, and I can override what was coded. Again, how do we offer <clears throat> the ability to be able to, to change what's on the um, on, you know, preset or change what's happening so it's not so mechanical in nature, top to bottom, like we, you know, believe that automation was many, many, many years ago when it first came into the industry. And, you know, really was the idea of how do I control things linear top to bottom in a perfect world. We all know that that just doesn't happen anymore. With that being said, if my weather guy comes running in and says, hey, I've got a weather tornado watch I need to get on the air for. I have all the buttons in the world that I could say, hey, I need to put my weather person on the air. So I'm just going to go to my one on a weather three shot or I can go to my one, my weather queue and it'll immediately take the weather and put it on the air. It'll do his microphone and everything else. So if I do look at my audio faders. You see the weather person's mic open, and I've now put the weather person on the air um, so that, you know, again, I've got the ability to go wherever I need to on the fly without any prep at all. So that's a little bit about how that operates. Um, our system is, um, you know, very similar in how they see it in the newsroom versus how they see it in the control room. So this is our honor playlist that I've been showing you, which is what the directors will see when they come into the control room when they're actually in the newsroom. And they see iNews, they have the exact same interface, except they have a different application that's called Playlist Viewer. And in Playlist Viewer, the application is the same, except it just doesn't control the equipment. So that is their primary source of how you decide what's going to happen on air. But the important thing is that when they're coding here or when they're prepping their show in the newsroom or wherever they prep at home or wherever they happen to be, and then they walk in to actually do their show, the, uh, the interface looks the exact same. And that's what's important for them is I want to know how it's going to look when I walk in because I don't want to step through the rundown ahead of time. I know I may not have time to. I want to know exactly what's going to look like when I'm ready to go. Okay. We are fully MOS based. Um, and like I said, we've got interfaces to almost every third party um, device that you could possibly imagine from lighting, teleprompter, um, and many, many more. Um, you know, and it really is a, a seamless integration. Um, and right now it's, um, it's an interesting time too, because what we find ourselves doing is we're spending a lot of time right now, um, going in and swapping out, um, from uh, prior systems and installing the LC as I think that, you know, the automation has really become pretty saturated in the country. You know, I think that overall, you know, we've done a really good job as an industry moving forward, adopting the technology. And now we're really finding that we're going in and we're. We're working with people who have already adopted one system in the past and then just migrating over to ELC. Uh, and the training is really, really very simple on that because operating ELC is, is very much a, um, an easy to use system as it is. And then when we add into that, the fact that people already have some experience with an, with an automation workflows, it really is just a home run. So, that's that's pretty much my presentation and how it is. I don't know if anyone has any other questions specifically to what we're doing for within again with them regards to the, the time frame of the pandemic or where we are um, going in the future of the software development. Um, any specific questions on the devices that we're you know capable to control um, or any workflows or any other questions, um, you know, I'd be absolutely happy to answer. 
Thank you so much, Jason. It looks like we've uh, had just a few questions that did come through the chat. We haven't seen anything come through the Q&A as of yet. And I know we've got a, a few more minutes if folks had some things they wanted to, to inquire about. But I think it's always uh, so incredibly helpful to have that, that application to the current, like some of the, you know, what you answered prior. So that's that's extremely helpful. And, um, and we can get a moment here uh, for folks to drop those questions in if they have them. Um, otherwise, if you have other uh, pieces that you feel like are applicable that maybe you didn't get a chance to talk about within your normal presentation, you're more than welcome to, to touch on those, or we can give just a moment here for folks to, oh, looks like we just got a question coming in um, with as far as the, of, of any kind of um, training that the length of training that you might have for um, some of the, the setup of the systems. That's a really good question. So, Something to note about the training is that, you know, ELC is uniquely a solution that Sony remains the partner for the rest of the time that you're doing broadcast. So, you know, unlike something like, you know, if we go back 10, 15 years ago and you came to Sony and we provided you, you know, like our cameras or things like that, we would train you how to use the camera. And at that point on, people just use the camera every day and there weren't ever questions. But Sony is, um, ELC is a unique product in that we are constantly doing additions to our software, taking a request from the existing customers, rolling them into software updates and giving those software updates to our customers. So it's a long-term relationship that we develop when we, when we are using an ELC system. With that said, um, gen we talk about general training timeframes and in most situations, we are only a 10 day total training situation. Now, it's, you know, we do kind of spread that out over a little time to allow to rehearse. So in a scenario where we go to a television station that has never had automation workflows, what we do is we come on site and we spend you know, three to five days with the, with the um, primary directors and technical directors at the station and sees as implementing. And we teach them everything about how to use the system, what automation, um, you know, feels like, what you need to think about, how cameras are prepped and how we get those ready for the next use, you know, how we queue up um, graphics and how we queue up uh, playout servers so that, you know, it's all kind of automated and how to think about things that are going to work within those workflows. Um, at that point, then we typically will leave for a week or two and allow a television station to rehearse because, you know, surprisingly, um, you know, we need to have buy-in from producers. We need to have buy-in from talent. We need to have buy-in from management, and that is the most successful way. When we work with, when we go to television stations, um, I will frequently speak to producers during the production meetings that they have in the morning and the afternoon. Um, I used to be a TD. I was in engineering management for 20 years plus in the business before I came to Sony full-time. Um, and I worked as a contractor for Sony before doing training. So, you know, my experience with producers is that I, you know, from, from my career before Sony is one that I know what it is they're looking for. And what the producers are looking for is to get the content they've been working for eight hours with on the air as cleanly as possible using, you know, unique methods that they feel will bring people to watch their shows. It is something that, you know, producers take their shows very seriously and they want a clean show. They want it to be, um, you know, precisely what they thought it was going to be as they were driving the show and they wanted to be clean, you know, as far as the production content as well. And what we do is I will work with producers and say, here are things you need to think about for you know, doing an automated style show. As an example, we can put many, many cues in each individual story of ELC. Like you see here on page 36, I actually have three elements and producers will always say, should I put my on camera on a separate page or is it okay to put it all together like this? And I always say, let me ask you a question. And within a newscast, if I have a, a story called Happy Dog, and I know that they're out shooting that story, and I may not get the video in house because maybe the editor's not going to be ready, or maybe there isn't actually a um, story to shoot, would I want to do that story on camera anyways without the video? If the answer is no, I'm not going to do it anyways. Well, then I would put it all in one story. So if the producer decides I want to get rid of that story, the whole thing goes away. Okay. That would get rid of the video, the graphics, the ELCQ, the teleprompter, anything that's part of that story would go away with one click. If as a producer, I decide, you know what, I really do want to do the story, but I'm just going to have an anchor reading on camera if that video doesn't make it in, then I would say, you know what, you should put it on two lines so that I can float just the video portion, but I'm going to keep the teleprompter and the camera. So the most important thing that I can stress for anybody using automation is teamwork. Teamwork between the director and the producer, teamwork so that they both are going in knowing that the director is doing everything they can to make it as clean as possible, and that the producer is doing everything they can to assist the director in doing what they need to do, which is, again, provide a clean show back for the content, which is where we see our, our goal is as an ELC. 
we want to be able to improve the workflow without changing the way that producers are, are doing their newscasts. So to go back to the original question, originally if we you know if we're spending three to five days um, with a customer we will leave for a week or two and then come back and rehearse with them with the talent as well and then we'll spend a couple more days just kind of giving the finer points and our tweaks and in under a month time um, they're on the air and doing shows that are you know just as good um, as as you know as they were doing before plus new things that they didn't even think were possible back to back you know quad boxes uh, over the shoulders, wiping out to a quad box of video, things that they never would have attempted manual because the system is already prepping those things for them. So, you know, safe bet is to say total count, total time on a calendar is, is three weeks, four weeks. Total time of actual on site training is about 10 minutes. That's great. Yeah, and it's always great to have that insight and have somebody there st sitting next to you, walking you through, giving you some different scenarios to work with. So that's that's extremely helpful. And and I'm sure there's you know uh, modifications we make during the pandemic and, and ways in which you're in person versus virtual and and a lot of uh, a lot of shifts that we make there. But it sounds like you've got a a hold on how you can make this an easy transition. So thank you for answering that question. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, um, it looks like we've kind of reached the end of your, your presentation and um, we don't have as many questions coming in at the moment, um, but uh, incredibly helpful. I really appreciate you um, taking the time to walk through to answer the questions that came in um, and for the opportunity to have this this webinar available to to everyone that attended today and as well of, available to those that um, didn't get able didn't weren't able to, to come into the uh, webinar today. So we have, as I mentioned, recorded this as we did with the first of this two part series, the inner workings of uh uh, landing pages is, is available uh, here in the chat. I put that in as an option to go back to that recording. And, and on the landing page that we have on our website, we'll also be posting that recording uh, from today. And we'll make sure that we have a link to the recording sent out to everyone, uh, pass it along to your colleagues and uh, other additional resources there for your reference. Uh, uh, going down the road. And if you have questions to reach out to us, um, we would love to hear from you. Uh, reach out to your contact. Um, Jason's pro provided his contact information here as well. And um, for Diversified, I've also drafted the chat if you just uh, don't have a Diversified contact and want to reach out to us. Jason, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate your insight and, and your knowledge and expertise on this. My pleasure. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it for everyone. And um, as I said, if you, uh, you can reach out to either uh, myself or Diversified for any additional information, be happy to help you. Excellent. Hope everyone has a, a wonderful rest of your, your day um, and a Thanksgiving holidays for those that are enjoying that time together with family. And um, we uh, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.